here today to introduce you to Dr. Troop, who has been working here at Ephrata for four years as the superintendent. He has also worked um, in different school districts for over 20 years, um, talking about hiring the hiring process of different teachers and educators at those school. So today I thought it would be good to talk to him, have a good conversation about resumes and cover letters. So first question I have for you, um, what type of material, materials are submitted when using um, and trying to get a resume to an employer? Well, I, I think it, it generally either starts with someone asking you to submit materials because they think you might be a good fit for a position, or you are looking for a job and, and you find like, hey, they're, they're hiring at, at, at one place or another. And um, I think in general, you want to submit two items, a resume, but as important is a cover letter. So cover letter and resume are, are generally what we see when um, you're looking to uh, seek employment at a place for the first time. Okay. So in your opinion, which is more important, the resume or the cover letter? Well, I think they're both important. The cover letter is what they'll see first. That'll be on top or, or attached first if you're sending it uh, electronically. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that really should tell your story and, and really share why you're interested in the position, why it's a good fit for you, and why you're a good fit for the position. So it's, it's not just a repeat of the facts that are on the resume, it's more of telling a story about um, why you and the position uh, should, should connect. So the cover letter is more of like an introduction like to like yourself, to the employers? It is. It's, okay. it's giving you, without being too long, and you don't want to tell the whole story and, and tell unrelated um, pieces of information, but, but certainly things that you've experienced and mm -hmm. that you've been able to see or accomplish that speak to the position responsibilities um, are, are certainly relevant. You want the person reading the cover letter to want to turn the page and look at your resume. Okay. So you want to really start that relationship. It's kind of your first formal introduction, like you said, to that, that person reading the cover letter or the, uh, the business. Okay, okay. Um, so what exactly are employers looking for in resumes? Like different facts or just like just lots of information a little bit of information or well I think as far as the resume you want to make sure that that's that's completely clean and um, clean meaning that no mistakes free from errors uh, that's that's a high high importance in that document um, it's, it's one of the only two it's the two documents you're sending I'm um, an employer that is thinking about hiring you needs to be able to know that you can produce high quality work so you have a chance to demonstrate that on how high quality these two documents are so specifically talking about the resume it, it should be easy to find the things that you think are most important the things mm -hmm. you want them to see and know about your experience um, should be popping out it, it should start with certainly uh, my objective uh, if I'm the uh, applicant of why I want to be a part of this organization this business or, or have this job um, and then also uh, highlight the things that so that they um, can understand why they should want me in that position so you're really trying to uh, highlight the, the parts that you think make this a good fit. Um, it's important to always be honest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's a temptation to exaggerate sometimes on a resume. Um, that comes back to haunt you, um, whether it's in the short term or even if, if, if you think you got away with it, um, it'll come back afterwards while you're hired that they'll, they'll uh, it never works out mm -hmm. um, exaggerating. So you want to be honest. You, you want to represent sort of like your best self. So you don't have to be honest. We're sharing every, like, every mistake that you've made. That's not, that's not yeah. content for a resume. But it's also not not uh, honest if you're uh, over exaggerating things that you've done or that you've been a part of. Okay, so the cover letter and resume are obviously kind of different. So what is important about the cover cover letter? Well, I think the cover letter is is more uh, of a conversation. I mean, it's not bullet points. Mm -hmm. It's it's a couple paragraphs just to share who you are, um, why you're interested in the position, why this position um, is is something that that you're uniquely positioned to uh, be successful at. Um, and, and you want them to see that uh, you're, uh, you've thought out the process and not just applying because it's a convenient job or because it's located near to where you live mm -hmm. or you need employment or you need earnings. Um, that, that's not material for that. That may be true, um, but there's lots of people that have that as, as a true statement that they want to be paid for what they're going to do. Um, you want to stand out by saying, hey, um, you know, this is an interest I've, I've I've always considered throughout my life or I, I plan to do something professionally with this later in my life and this would give me an experience. So you want to connect it to something bigger than just a part-time job or a summer job or a, uh, a job that's just an hourly wage type thing where you're still working towards your career. Um, also a temptation to uh, be funny or stand out or, or kind of show your personality when you're writing a letter like that. I generally tell people to steer away from that. Um, you want to be really professional. 
um, when you think about it, they're they're going to endorse you. Mm -hmm. They're going to yeah. they're going to hire you. They're going to put a lot of times their company name on your shirt mm -hmm. when you're when you're uh, representing them. So they want someone that that's going to be professional and represent their business well. Okay. Well, another controversy about like being comfortable or sarcastic is that people, the employers are going to try to look at your social media. So whether that's Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, we all know about the story about the girl in Millersville that had a picture on Facebook and then that cost her her career. So do they actually look at your social media when trying to um, employ mm -hmm. you? Absolutely. Absolutely they will. Um, it's becoming more and more um, commonplace for that to be the first place that they look. When they, when they get names of, of candidates, um, maybe even before or during the time when the paperwork that we're talking about is mm -hmm. being reviewed, they're looking at social media. Um, I, I think a good rule of thumb is that if you are willing to have it put on the side of a bus and have it run downtown, that picture or that, that snap that you want to share with people, then it's okay to, to tweet or to share or to post. Um, if you have to think twice about, I don't want this out for everybody, then don't, don't post it because yeah. employers will see it. And like I said before, they're, they're going to endorse you. They're going to uh, invest in you. You're going to wear their company name on, your, on their shirt. Um, they need to, to feel comfortable that you're going to represent them well. The reality is that not everyone's going to be perfect in their social media footprint. Mm -hmm, of um, course. So there's mistakes in everyone's past. And I think um, that doesn't eliminate you from being hired, shouldn't eliminate you from being hired. Um, but I think you need to demonstrate, be ready to demonstrate and to talk through how you've learned from that experience. Um, and hopefully it's far enough in your past that you can, you know, talk about the maturity that you, you've acquired since, mm -hmm. since posting that, since that mm -hmm. era, because um, that's probably more important. Um, most employers aren't looking for people that have never made mistakes. They're looking for people that can learn from their mistakes and be better each day, each week, each month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have any other advice, any pros or cons or do's and don'ts t as to keep on going with this process of making a resume? Well, I think it's good to uh, share. A lot of times they'll be submitted uh, digitally, so it'll be attached to an email. Um, I think complying with what the specific requests for the position are, like if they only ask for a resume, um, I think you can send the resume and the cover letter and say, I know the position only required submitting a resume, but I thought my cover letter spoke to the trend that you, I hope you see in, in, my, uh, in my resume. Mm -hmm. Share the experiences, both volunteer and uh, paid experiences that I've had in this field. Mm -hmm. So I think you can, you can talk about it and be kind of transparent in that, knowing that, hey, maybe, they, maybe they're asking for a resume and cover letter, and um, you want to mention that, hey, I have more materials. I have, I have evaluations from my previous employer. Or I have some references that kind of can speak to my abilities in this if, if you're requested. So it's always nice to offer that uh, extra information if needed without it being like forceful. And, and so I think there's a, there's a way to do that if it's a cover email or even in your, in your cover letter. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that you look at a lot of re resumes when hiring and doing things. So when you look at a resume, what if the person doesn't have a lot of experience? Do you still... Do, you, do like employers just look at the experience or do they look about more about other facts and things like that? Well, I think it depends on the job, certainly. Um, experience helps, um, but a lot of, time, a lot of times uh, positions that they're hiring, that they're looking for people that are teenagers or, or early 20s, um, they may not have a lot of experience. So mm -hmm. you, you should hopefully be able to demonstrate how you've um, tried to gain experience, whether through volunteering, um, activities that, that aren't for pay, that are associated with church or school or sports. Um, um, and then also pull out the experiences you've had that maybe don't on the surface seem like they're related to the position, but maybe you had to manage a budget when you were volunteering at a church summer camp and you had to, to purchase supplies and manage money that way. That's a good thing to, to pull out because when they just look at a volunteer at church for the, the summer camp, they may not understand that you were involved with budgeting and, and doing mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So pull out those specifics that relate to the position as much as you can in the cover letter as well as highlight them in the resume. Okay. A lot of times people get worried about GPA okay. um, and, and worried about, hey, I'm not going to apply for something because my GPA isn't above uh, you know, a, a 3.5 or whatever that, that number that they have in their head. Mm -hmm. I don't think good GPA ever gets you a job. I, I think a bad GPA, a really bad GPA, like um, can cool. keep you from getting considered. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's that's the way we kind of look at when we hire for the district. We look at their you know, college. Obviously, we're hiring a lot of college graduates. We mm -hmm. look at their GPA. It's not going to get someone a job automatically just because their GPA is, is so great. Um, but a, a really poor GPA could keep them from getting in the door and, and giving them 
the opportunity to sell themselves. So mm -hmm. um, it's important for those that are still working on their GPAs and still studying to, to put some importance in that into that, that number because that's going to appear on every document for probably every job application, at least in their early career mm -hmm. they, that they yeah. submit. Okay. Do you have um, any other closing thoughts? Well, I think when you're talking about the materials that you're submitting and, and how uh, close to perfect you want them, um, a lot of times people can read the same document multiple times and not see a mistake or a, an awkward wording. Um, I think always having someone you trust look mm -hmm. over your materials as one kind of last proof before you hit send or submit them in, in paper form um, is good practice. Both of those documents should, should be an honest and fair representation of their best self. So um, just like when you're meeting someone for the first time and you want to make a good impression, these two documents should be the paper version of that impression. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for your time, and um, I hope that everybody has learned a little bit more about resumes and cover letters. Thank you.